I would love to start uh, by speaking about Prokofiev. So uh, we're going to hear Prokofiev, of course, this evening. Um, we've been recording Prokofiev over the past few years. You've decided to bring Prokofiev 2 and 5 to Carnegie Hall in, uh, after performing them in, in Cleveland in January. Tell me about what Prokofiev means to you. What, what's special about Prokofiev for you as a, as a conductor? You know, uh, when I, in my young days, when I studied violin and you would start to tackle the second violin concerto, that was the first piece by Prokofiev I ever got to know. And then there was, uh, in 1983, um, I was in Vienna uh, and standing room ticket for the, at that time it was still called the Leningrad Philharmonic with uh, Yevgeny Bravinsky, who, is, um, who was one of the great conductors, I think, of all times. And he, from a relatively early age on, he when he became music director of the Leningrad Philharmonic, he never conducted any other orchestra. And he was music director there for about 45 years. And a very, yeah, uh, towering musician. And the program was uh, Prokofiev VI and after intermission excerpts from Roman and Juliet. And I stood there and Prokofiev VI felt like a tank was going over me. Uh, it was so powerful, uh, emotionally so powerful to hear that music. So that was, was sort of uh, the experience which hooked me on to his music. And later on, uh, actually in, in my uh, opera career, that's the only ballet I ever conducted complete ballet uh, in Zurich that was Roman and Juliet uh, production. Um, yeah, I, I think, you know, uh, we go through phases. I, I remember when I grew up, um, Richard Strauss was played a lot before the big Mahler uh, wave <laughs> came and, and Strauss was pushed aside a little bit. And, and also then, you know, Shostakovich, Shostakovich, Shostakovich. And I, I think uh, Prokofiev is such a master in how he orchestrates, how he invents melodies. And uh, his music is very multi-layered. And actually, his music is also really difficult to play, so you, you need a great orchestra, a, an orchestra which loves working on details um, to do really justice to his music. What has been so far the, the revelation for you in either performing these symphonies again or preferring some of looking at them for, for, the, for the first time after I, all these years? Uh, the big revelation was really when we played, uh, some years ago, we played the second symphony in Miami. That was the first time we, we played that. And I thought, oh God, you know, Miami audiences, uh, Prokofiev's <laughs> second symphony, that's, that's a tough piece. And to my big surprise, people really embraced it. And it, again, it's such an emotionally powerful piece. So that, that really spoke to me that the music, if you, if you really dig deep, uh, is, is emotionally powerful for, for any audience. And so uh, again, it's, it's something uh, this orchestra really has embraced. I mean, like last season, Symphony Number no. Four, which is which is is hard uh, to perform, but maybe also to listen to. But you know, uh, we anyway always try to give it uh, our best. But um, <laughs> I remember when we rehearsed 
uh, uh, Symphony Number no. Four, and there were quite a few sighs mm -hmm. in the orchestra uh, about how difficult the piece is. 